Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all new 2024 M4 Mac mini. Apple has finally redesigned it. It's much smaller and looks a little bit different. So I thought we'd unbox it. We'll compare it with the old design and also do some initial benchmarks. It starts at $599. That's what this one is, the base model. And what that gets you is 16 gigs of Ram with 256 gigs of storage. You can spec this all the way up with an M4 Pro to eight terabytes of storage and 64 gigabytes of of RAM and get a 10 gig ethernet port. Now I did actually spec one out that was a little bit higher end than this, but it didn't arrive until a little bit later. So let's go ahead and open this up. So we'll pull off the little pull tabs here. And this is Apple's first carbon neutral product they say. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we've got inside. So we'll pull off the top like that. And here's the Mac mini itself, super small. And again, we'll compare it in just a moment. And then in the box, it looks like we've got our plug, of course, and then a little round packet here that says designed by Apple in California. If we open this up, let's see how we get this here. We can just take the paperwork out of the top and it says Mac mini. There's no stickers anymore. And this is just sort of a small quick start guide showing all of the different ports and the power button. Let me set this aside and we'll take a closer look at the Mac mini itself. So here's the power cable. It's a braided power cable. So we'll undo it here just like this and remove the power cable. So the actual power supply is not external. It's within the Mac mini itself. And you can see this is a braided cable. So very nice. I like that they've done that. Let me set this aside as well. And there we go. So here is the Mac mini itself. You can see on the bottom, we have our power button and some people have said, this is a big deal. I don't really think it is. You're going to turn it on and then walk away. Let it go into standby. It's not really necessary to have this thing shut down every night and then reboot it, but it's easy enough to reach. And then again, there's a vent that's also an intake and exhaust at the same time. And then on the front, we have two USB C ports. We have a little status indicator light and then our headphone jack. On the back, we have our power cable adapter, ethernet, HDMI, and we have three Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the M4 Pro variant, these are Thunderbolt 5 ports. Either way, if you want to expand storage, there's plenty of drives out there that are fast enough on Thunderbolt 4 that this shouldn't be an issue. As far as the overall size comparison, let's go ahead and bring in some older ones. So I have one here that even has the super drive slot in it. This gives you an idea of what it looks like as far as the overall size. And then I have one a little bit later that was space gray. So again, you can see the size next to it and stacked side by side. It's about one and a quarter the height of all of the old ones stacked. So the couple of them stacked, you can see side by side. If we bring this in here, two of them stacked on top of each other, it's about one and a quarter of those. On the bottom, to give you an example, you'll see here in the corner of it, very small. And then as far as the overall back ports, of course we get less just because of its overall physical size, but this was sort of the peak port era with USB-C and much more before, even with Firewire going back to this version. One more quick comparison is with the Mac Studio. This is the M1 Ultra Mac Studio, and this gives you an idea of what it looks like. And this is probably one of my least favorite designed devices. However, the Mac Mini has a different scale to it. So it looks a little bit more elegant where the previous one looks more industrial. So I think the Mac Mini definitely looks better, but it's about two of them thick. So two Mac Minis thick gives you about a Mac Studio or so. So again, similar design and everything on the bottom. Now internally, this does have Wi-Fi 6E, so it does not have Wi-Fi 7 and it has Bluetooth 5.3. Let me go ahead and set this up and then I'll run a couple benchmarks to see how it compares with the other models. Apparently the M4 Pro has a high power mode as well. Now the initial setup of the Mac was pretty straightforward with Mac mini. However, it did have Mac OS 15 installed from the start. So it had version 24A8332 and now we have Mac OS 15.1 Sequoia available. I already updated it. So if we go to the Apple about this Mac, you can see it here where we have the new Mac mini 2024 Apple M4, 16 gigs of Ram. And you'll see here Sequoia 15.1. If we click on it, you can see the new version is 248 2083. 
So we're good to go. Everything's installed. So let's go ahead and run a few benchmarks. Now we'll just do a couple simple things. So I do have Geekbench installed. I have a few other things installed. So Blackmagic speed test, and this is not screen recording normally. This is actually going through a recorder so that it's not using any additional processing power. So let's go ahead and test the speed and you'll see the right speed on the 512 gigabyte model is about 2000 or so. And we have about 2642 for read speed. We'll give it just a second here, see what it goes back and forth with. But if you use external storage, this is great because you're going to get probably a little bit faster than these speeds with Thunderbolt four. So again, we'll try it again and we get about 3000 read speed. So depending on the test, 2000 write speed, 3000 read speed, that seems about right. And that's for the 256 gig variant. Now, if we go ahead and open something else, maybe we'll open Geekbench here, wherever that went. So now we're in Geekbench. You can see the latest build and everything here. Let's go ahead and run a CPU benchmark and see what we get. Now I ran this against the M3 Max MacBook Pro for comparison. And when it comes to the single core, the new M4 base model is faster with 3,754 compared to 3,246. However, when it comes to the multi-core score, the new M4 is 13. 13,635 compared to 21,351 on the top spec M3 Max. So pretty good for single core, no issues there. Let's run one more Geekbench test with the GPU. So we'll go to the GPU test here and then we'll just run what we've got here. We'll run the metal GPU test and then see what we get. When it comes to metal, this is where the M3 Max or the Max chipset will excel. But with the M4 base, we got 57,676 compared to 161,999. So definitely a difference there. But again, this is the base model that's about a tenth of the price of the other device. Now, if we try something such as video exports. This should be pretty straightforward. Now this is my iPhone 15 pro max versus iPhone 16 pro max video. And you'll see all the edits here. It's almost 18 minutes long. Let's go ahead and export this. We'll just use the built-in export options, maybe HEVC since that's what I typically use a lot. And then maybe I'll just save it to documents and I'll have a little timer here so I can see what it's doing as far as the overall speed. The video is completed. And while the M3 Max was faster with six minutes and 28 seconds, the M4, just the base model, came in at nine minutes and 43 seconds. That's very impressive, especially for a base model with 256 gigs of storage and very little Ram compared to what we have on the M3 Max. So very impressive results. And if you need a little bit more, maybe go for the M4 Pro with additional storage, maybe to speed that up. Now, as far as new wallpaper, if we scroll down, we only have the new iMac wallpaper for some reason. So for whatever reason, they didn't include new Mac mini wallpaper. They just basically have the iMac wallpaper here, which would be on the iMac as well. So for whatever reason, we just have Sequoia, which is great, but we don't have anything as far as a new one specifically for the Mac mini, which is a bit disappointing. Now I did try to run some LLM benchmarks and they wouldn't even load. It said it would overload the resources of the system. So maybe we'll try something else, but in general, the overall basic usage of a Mac mini, especially the base one is great for just using things such as Safari or email or photos. You can easily edit photos. You can edit 4k video on here. No problem. 4k 60, whatever you'd like, and it will get the job done. So with Mac mini, I think this is a great Mac for maybe someone that just wants a simple desktop, plug it into an existing monitor that you have any monitor or even a TV. It's got HDMI and you can just use it with Thunderbolt or use it as a basic Mac. If you want something else that has a display, then maybe a MacBook Air would be great. This seems to be plenty fast, no issues whatsoever, and it's definitely something I can recommend. If you're going to plan to edit video with it or you want to maybe use Photoshop or Lightroom, you may want to opt for the M4 Pro since it has a little bit more power and of course additional RAM if you need that. But other than that, I think this is a great starter Mac and it's surprising how fast it is compared to what we have with the M3 Max MacBook Pro. So no issues here with this whatsoever. I can recommend it and it's more than enough for the average user. If you need something a little bit more pro, maybe you're running LLMs or architecture programs or something along those lines, 3D modeling, well then you're 
you're probably going to opt for something a little more powerful anyway. But if you're looking for a basic desktop Mac that's small and out of the way, but has all the connectivity you want, I think this is a great option. Let me know what you think of the new Mac mini in the comments below. And of course I'll link a new wallpaper for you in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.